It seems as though one of the most important antioxidants, especially for the immune system, is not really vitamin C. And it's not really a typical antioxidant. That's what kind of throws a wrench in everything. It's actually a mineral. And the interesting thing behind this entire mineral is a cascade and a plethora of different ways that it impacts our body's own ability to neutralize free radicals. That doesn't sound that exciting, but what that essentially means is it makes it so that our body does the work for us rather than having to constantly supplement with antioxidants or really aim to get it from our food all the time. It's interesting stuff. Let's go ahead and dive in. After today's video, I put a discount link for Sunday's dog food. Now, Sunday's is a human grade pet food. This is cool. I've got three dogs. At one point I had four. So we're big dog people. And I know that a lot of people that watch this channel care about their dogs, sometimes even more than they care about themselves. So when you have a human grade dog food, that means that you could literally eat it yourself. That's how high the quality is. So I popped that link down below. It was started by a veterinarian, really interesting stuff where she was really interested in just changing how we treated our dogs. Like why do we give our dogs secondhand food? Like they're part of our family this day and age. Why don't we treat them how we wanna be treated? So we're talking really, really, really good quality ingredients. If you look at the label, it's like all really good stuff. We've got the meat, you've got the sweet potato, straight up real food. So anyway, that link down below will save you a few bucks. Highly recommend that you check them out. So cutting right to the chase, I'll tell you the antioxidant I'm talking about. I'm talking about zinc, but you should probably hear how it works and how to implement it so you can get the best effect. Now, the first thing we have to address is like, yes, zinc has an effect with the immune system directly as far as how it works with vitamin D, how it works in other, uh, you know, T cell function and everything like that. That is absolutely important, but that is more a direct mechanism rather than the antioxidant profile. There was a relatively new study that was published in Pharmacological Research, and it wasn't just any study. It was a massive study that looked at 10 trials. Okay, so they looked at all kinds of different data, major analysis, and they found that zinc increased the ability to neutralize free radicals, it increased total oxidative uh, binding capacity, so total antioxidant capacity. It increased what is called glutathione, and it decreased malaldehyde, which is a very big marker for oxidative stress. It sounds like Greek, but what I'm saying here is this might be way more powerful than some of the stuff that we spend hundreds of dollars on, and it's a supplement that we could probably get for like $10. I wanna explain why it is this way and when you should sort of increase because you don't wanna always take in high amounts of zinc and it's kind of a playbook you have to follow. So zinc is what is called a cofactor, meaning it's required sort of as a, almost a co-pilot in a way to form what is called superoxide dismutase, arguably the largest, strongest antioxidant naturally built in our body. If we didn't have superoxide dismutase, we would essentially die. But the other piece that's really interesting is that zinc is required to form cellular membranes, which also act as a line of defense against pathogens, against all kinds of things. So a very important molecule in general, but it goes deeper than just that. If you're someone that's eating a higher fat diet, then you are at a higher risk of what's called lipid peroxidation. So lipid peroxidation is where fats get oxidized. So if you were to leave like fish out on your counter and you let it sit there for a couple days, it would start to go rancid and stink really bad, right? Well, essentially that's what's happening inside your body in a very colloquial way when you have rancidity, right? You have bad oils, bad fats that become oxidized. This is clearly something that can damage DNA, clearly something that the body needs to neutralize. So lipid peroxidation is that act. So by reducing lipid peroxidation, we're reducing sort of the oxidative stress that's occurring at a lipid or fat level very, very targeted approach with zinc. So I think that zinc is really a must have for people that are doing a lower carb, higher fat diet to sort of attenuate the risk of that lipid peroxidation that could occur. There's also something that's really important. It's called glutamate cysteine ligase formation. And this expression of glutamate cysteine ligase is very, very important. In fact, it is what is called a rate limiting step for glutathione production. So glutathione is very interesting because what glutathione does is it neutralizes a free radical, in this case like a rogue electron that comes from the metabolism of food or whatever, and it does this by donating an electron itself. So every time glutathione neutralizes a bad guy, it's like it gives part of itself to that bad guy in order to neutralize it. Imagine if you were chasing a bad guy and you just had to like rip your arm off and throw it at the guy. And that's how you got the bad guy, but now you don't have an arm. So it takes a lot of energy through different sulfur mechanisms and glutathione peroxidase sort of rebuilding this whole recycling to put that arm back on. So without zinc, we can't go through that process. 
So that means that without zinc, we don't have the ability to fight the bad guys as much. What does this mean for you? Like, how do you use zinc? I think zinc is one of those things where it's so valuable because it's effect as far as an antioxidant, but it also can be very dangerous. You see, in the same way that it helps, it can also hurt. Because zinc will neutralize iron, it will bind to iron, it'll bind to copper. Iron and copper can also oxidize things. Again, I use this analogy all the time, like iron, like an iron dumbbell. If you left it out in the rain, it would rust, right, out in the elements. Well, iron in our body, in abundance, can do the same kind of thing. It sort of oxidizes. Well, the cool thing is, is that zinc will neutralize it. It kind of chelates it. But if you go too far, too much zinc will cancel out a lot of your copper and a lot of your iron, which is obviously very required, very much so required. So with this, what do we do here? That's where, unfortunately, you actually have to keep a close eye on what you're eating. If you're eating things like shellfish, if you're eating things like seafood, if you're eating things like Brazil nuts, if you're eating things like pumpkin seeds, where you're getting natural amounts of zinc in, you shouldn't be supplementing zinc that day. So it's hard because it's not a pill that you can just like take every day, willy-nilly. There's two times that you should increase it. When you know your diet has been low, particularly in protein, because then your light chances of getting zinc are probably low as well. The other side is when you increase your intensity of training, when you're sleep deprived, or especially when you're sick. Because the first line of defense is that zinc has to be used to support your immune system and T cell function. So once that is done, everything else gets sloppy seconds. So you need to make sure that you're paying attention to that. So if you're sick, you need to upregulate the zinc intake. How much zinc should you take? I hardly ever recommend taking over 50 milligrams. I think what most people should do is sort of titrate their dose based on A, how they feel, but B, based upon their activity and their sickness. So what I'll do is I'll get 10 milligram capsules of zinc and I'll sort of increase my dose up and down based upon my activity level and based upon how I feel. What I do is I actually look at my, uh, my aura ring, I look at my whoop strap, I look at these two things, and I look at my overall recovery. When my recovery is down on both my aura and my whoop, that's my indicator to take zinc. You might be thinking that's way too much work, and I understand it is, so just use your own sort of litmus test with it. But as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.